Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 37 of Talent Dead. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Scanson. Uh, today, we're joined by the multi-talented J.M. Ryerson, uh, founder of three successful businesses, a best-selling author, a host of the Let's Go Win podcast. Uh, with over 20 years in leadership, J.M. now empowers teams to transcend their limits. So from Montana roots to sunny Boca Raton, Florida, uh, JM's mission is to inspire greatness. JM, it is so great to have you here uh, today and to talk with us. Eric, thanks for having me, brother. I appreciate it. And nice intro. I don't know if I've ever been called multi-talented, so I'll take it, man. I'll, I'll take that one to the bank. Yeah, I think you should. I think you should, <laughs> for sure. Uh, JM, tell us a little bit about yourself and your story, man. Like from Montana and now you're in Florida. Uh, how did it happen? Yeah, so... I actually never thought I'd leave Montana, but what happened is I blew out my knee for the third time playing basketball in college. And the reason that's re relative at all is I stopped playing ball and I ended up studying abroad. Well, I got back from studying over in the Netherlands and next thing I know, I'm graduating with two degrees and I'm like, what? How did this happen? <laughs> So I go on with my truck and a backpack I, and my brother, because he had just graduated high school and we go down to California on a road trip. And I end up basically moving with my truck and a backpack. I dropped my brother back off with my parents and I landed in California because I had an uncle in Northern California. Mm -hmm. And so I go into the corporate world and I end up figuring out I didn't love that. I didn't like people telling me where I had to be and how much money I could make. That didn't make sense with me. So I went into the world of being an entrepreneur and three companies later in the financial service world, I figured out, you know what? I really love building teams. I like mm -hmm. doing leadership and I've, that's how I started. Let's go win is I actually wrote the first book for my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 17 and 14 year old sons. And the whole idea was for them to not skin their knees as many times as I did. And after that, it just kind of took off the, the podcast and then coaching. And here's the amazing thing, Eric, every single day I get to wake up and work with people on inspiring them to live their best life. So I get to work on people that are like, this is my dream mm -hmm. and I get to somehow support it. I'm Have very, fun. very blessed in that regard. And I just love it, man. I, I literally, what I what I talk about in my books and in the podcast is what I'm passionate about, which is performance, leadership, and mindset. And so that's really kind of where I'm at today is just continuing mm -hmm. to do the right and, and do the podcast and, and do some coaching. Well, and, and a hot tip, if you're going to read Let's Go Win, um, it's awesome. I, I've read it. I'm in my second trip through. Um, but for all the listeners, if you're going to grab the audio version, here's the here's the secret jm is the reader also so like it's like you're having a conversation with them it's great it's really great thank good, you That's good nice. work jm i just uh there's so many great insights in that book and uh, it's a, it's an easy read um and it's really reflective and thoughtful on on how it was presented so uh, i want to congratulate you on that thank you um jm in in your experience with leadership across various sectors uh you know Primarily, we kind of talk to educators, we work with educators. What's what's that parallel you have between uh, corporate leadership and educational leadership, especially when it comes to, you know, driving that peak performance? Yeah, it's a fantastic question. Now, just for everyone, I have my mom was a teacher for 39 years. So I come from watching her come home from school mm -hmm. and helping her set up her classrooms before the school year and taking them down. So I feel like I've never worked in the school system at all but I feel like I really got a chance to watch it. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to leadership, to answer your question, it's really kind of all the same in my opinion, because you really are looking to have a leadership philosophy that you can share with your group and make sure that people that you bring on are in alignment with that. 
the biggest challenges I see, whether it's at a school or whether it's in an administration or it's uh, dealing with a, a company, is that people aren't clear on what are our values, what do we stand for, mm -hmm. how are we supposed to behave, what are we trying to accomplish? And when you can get everybody rowing the boat in the same direction, it's amazing what we can accomplish. So a simple example would be, what's the most important thing in education? My understanding would be it's not actually even educating the kids. The number one thing first is safety, mm -hmm. making sure that these kiddos, when they go to school, that they are going to be getting home safely and that they had a, a, a experience where they were able to learn and thrive. Mm -hmm. But most people don't know that, right? Most people think, no, they're sent to school to just learn. Well, that's a piece of it, certainly is a piece. But all the administrators I've talked to through the years, the number one job is child safety. And so that is a really important thing for everyone to understand. Now, that may not be for all school uh, districts mm -hmm. across the country, but that's my understanding with the ones that I've spoken with. And so that would be the idea would to share our number one priority is school safety and child that. safety. And when you share that, now it makes all your decisions extremely easy because that's the lens you're going to go through. Cool. We're going to bring this idea on. Does that match up with child safety? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of an idea of leadership to make sure that you're clear on what you're trying to um, accomplish. Well, and it's priority, right? And I, I can say priority because now I've read your book, whereas <laughs> previously we would have talked about priorities, right? Correct. But that changed. That changed. Do you, do you want to uh, take that any further? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and some of the listeners will disagree as my wife does. I don't believe in multitasking. I don't think that it's a thing that we should be doing now is my wife better at doing this thing multitasking than I? Yes, she mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. I believe in putting a hundred percent focus into whatever I'm doing. So for example, you and I are doing this show right now. You are a hundred percent. I'm going to give you everything that I have. It doesn't matter what I had before. And it certainly doesn't matter what I have after, but right in this moment, I'm going to commit everything and be completely present with you with the cell phone off mm -hmm. and really there. And that's the idea. When you say priority, it's really being in that present moment. Present. So an example would be a teacher. Again, you're going to put that cell phone away. You're going to put whatever personal challenges you have away. They go, as you walk through the door, that goes off and you are fully immersed and, and really present with these children as you're educating them. And we can apply that in every area of our life. So in a relationship, if I'm on date night, again, put the cell phone down. Don't worry about what's going on with the kids. Be Too with your significant other. Truly be present. And so that's really the priority <clears throat> you're talking about is handling one thing at a time and giving it everything that you have. Uh, I don't remember which book this came from, uh, but most recently it, it was uh, it was this concept of um, do less better, mm. do less better. You know, and I, I think that's something that we we probably lose a little bit in in today's age because. There's so many messages coming at us from our pocket, from the the flashing billboards to um, we got to have this, we got to have that. So how do we do less better? I think that's a great question. It's such a compelling question. And actually, I had a phone call earlier today and the guy was trying to recruit me to do this coaching and he's going through his system and literally he was into point like 63 and I said... <laughs> Have you ever run a business before? Respectfully, mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense. And by the way, I could have said that, you know, 50 points before this, why do we make it complicated? It doesn't need to be. In fact, I think Einstein is the one that said true genius is being able to take something complicated or complex mm -hmm. and to simplify. And so that's, I agree with you, brother. It's like, man, let's, let's simplify. Why make our world more complex than it mm -hmm. needs to be? Because it is, it's super complex. Uh, speaking of a simplified message, let's go win. Let's go win. The concept of winning emphasized in your book, let's go win the let's go win initiative podcast. Um, you know, this idea of winning can be subjective. In the realm of education, how would you define a win or or maybe even expand on that? Like, what is a win? 
Yeah, that's a great question. I get this often because I've had people that get really upset. So it's all about wins and losses. And I'm like, no, it's actually about setting yourself up to win every single day. Look, we are going to fail. I celebrate failure. I'm like, yes, I failed today. Guess what? That's getting me closer to my next victory. But the whole idea is every single moment, every day that I am showing up as the best version of me. Well, what does that look like? So again, let's apply it for a teacher. Before the teacher arrives at the school, what have, has he or she done for themselves so they can show up as the best educator? Did they wake up and take care of the kids and the house and the dogs and the breakfasts and everything, and then they go to their job? Or did they take the time to take care of their mind, their body, and their soul just for them for 15 minutes for that morning mm -hmm. so that they really fill their buckets? That's what Let's Go Win is all about, is to say, I want to show up as the best version of me in every moment. How do I do that? What are the things I need to do? And so I briefly mentioned mind, body, soul, it's the most basic coaching I do with people is I need you to take care of your mind, your body, and your soul before you put on the mm -hmm. mom hat or the dad hat or the brother hat or whatever hat you're wearing. You take care of you first so you can be the best version of whatever you're about to do. So that's really, brother, when I try to simplify what Let's Go Win is, that's what it is. Let's set ourselves up to win every single day. Does it mean we're not going to lose? No, we're going to fail. We're going to lose but we're going to set ourselves up to win. And when we do fall, we have a system to get back up and attack it with the same veracity and the same enthusiasm that we had mm. the first time we failed. This, uh, this reminds me of nature. There's a reason that when mama bears with the cubs, that mama bear eats the berries first, right? Because she's got to take care of herself so she can take care of the cubs. If she gives everything, 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 there's nothing left. And uh, I think about this as teachers or as individuals, like you gotta, you gotta take some berries for yourself, right? Before, before you can give away. So great message. Uh, again, I love this idea of that. We want to wake up. We want to set ourselves up for winning every single day. Uh, let's go on, on the opposite side of this, transcending self-limiting beliefs. Um, I want to get into this too. Um, in the educational sphere, both educators and students, uh, they, they might grapple with these constraints. So can we talk about this a little bit? What what kind of tools, um, what kind of tools can leaders provide to overcome such barriers around self-limiting beliefs? Yeah, this is a good question again, because so many of our beliefs were given to us before we even had a long-term memory. So before you're five, you have so many of these, I've heard up to 80% of your beliefs instilled. Well, the challenge with that is if mom and dad at home are saying that you're not worthy, you're not a good person, you're not whatever they're saying. Mm -hmm. And even if that's their perception, it doesn't make it true. Carol Dweck wrote an amazing book called Mindset. And I know it is throughout curriculums in schools across the country, which I'm such a fan of. She absolutely nailed it when she said, look, when you're speaking to your son, your daughter, your uh, someone in the school, you don't say you're smart because you got an A on the test. Hey, do you see how you mm -hmm. worked hard and you re achieved this result so that it's not so tied to the outcome, but rather to putting in the effort? And I think that's really what all these self-limiting beliefs are is, look, the world is going to tell you what you're not. We need to figure out what we are. So I'll give you an example. My sons have said the exact same affirmation every single day of their life. When they couldn't speak, I did it for them. And they've said it every night of their life before they go to bed. And I say, are you a leader? They say, yes. I say, how come? Because I'm confident, strong, intelligent, athletic, good looking, dynamic, popular, talented, independent boy with a growth mindset. They have said this hmm. for now 17 years from for my oldest son. And why is that important? Because my younger son was bullied at school. And this bully said, you're fat. And I said, Trey, is that true? He said, no. And I said, well, how did you respond? He said, I'm confident, strong, intelligent, athletic, good looking, dynamic. And he goes through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, what did the bully say? He said, he didn't know what to say, dad. <laughs> and I was so proud yeah. because Trey knew look, this isn't my insecurities. This is this other little boys. And I know who I am deep inside. 
And so that's one of the things that my wife and I have done a nice job of is giving them some positive affirmations, really rewiring their subconscious, because I'm sure in other ways, I haven't been the best parent. And I want them to know no matter what, even if I say you're not that, you know, you are. And so that's really what these self-limiting beliefs, helping other people Mm -hmm. overcome like it's that. not your fault. And it's certainly not who you are. It's just what the world told you that you are. So I'm passionate about this, brother. I could talk about this for a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm very passionate about people can achieve whatever they really want to, if they believe they can. And Henry Ford said it, whether you think you can or can't, you're right. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, what a proud dad moment that must be when he when he threw that those affirmations back. It, so. it was cool because it just everything de-escalated you know the bully is like what do you what you didn't come back at me no and so it, it was cool uh have you watched snl Stuart smalley with your kids <laughs> i have not with them but they, they might find it, yeah. that they might find that entertaining at this point uh okay so let's one more thing So given that continuous learning and adaptability are essential in both business and education, do you have any insights from your journey that uh, that we could talk about that are always at the forefront of like innovation and best practice? So I have a simple philosophy. I believe that you're either growing or you're decaying. There is no middle. You're not like chilling on the plateau. Mm -hmm. So if you're not educating yourself continuously, if you're not reading, doing podcasts, surrounding yourself with people that lift you up, then you're actually decaying. So when it comes to whether it's an educator or an executive or just, you know, a lowly mindset coach like myself, like, look, we need to continue to educate ourselves because a lot of people will stop their education at, let's say, 12th grade or an undergraduate, or Mm -hmm. even if they get their doctorate, that doesn't mean it stops. Education is a lifelong journey and process. And if we ever think we've arrived at a place where we know it all, you know, you've lost because there's so much to this world to learn and to absorb. And it's just, it's, I, I love it. And that's, I took, I briefly said I studied abroad and that's where I found my love for reading is when I was on the trains uh, cruising through Europe and I found these books and now, you know, I'm reading 30 to 40 books a year because there's so much you can gather Mm -hmm. from someone else's perspective. So Yeah, it's just having that growth mindset that I want to get better every single day. I want to learn. I think it's something that if nothing else is taught to the kids, if I were a teacher, it would be the one thing I would impart. And that's why my kids last thing is with the growth mindset. I want Mm -hmm. them to always yearn to get better, to learn about something because there's just so much available to us. So yeah, I, I, again, man, it's, this is one of those subjects where I just, I'm passionate about it. I, I love learning from other people mm. and just having that, that philosophy of I have a growth mindset in every way. That's what I look at in my bathroom mirror. It tells me, remember, go have a growth mindset today and go learn something. Well, who knows? Maybe we'll have to come back and talk just about growth mindset. <laughs> I, that might be fascinating. You, you know, we, before we push record today, uh, we kind of talked about loving some of the same books. Uh, that that you mentioned in Let's Go In. And in Let's Go In, you talk about reading something in the morning, you know, whether it's what it, just 10 pages, like, like, learn, learn to love yourself, learn to, uh, to in, engage with yourself, even just a page, like, how, what are you doing every morning to to make yourself better? And uh, people always say, I don't have time to read books, I don't have time to read books. But I love the thing that you said about just read something, read something in the morning. You know, you don't have to meditate for 30 minutes, just meditate. It's a lot easier to, 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 to have positive affirmations around that. Great yeah, advice. it's funny because if you put, I used to always say read 10 pages a day. And then if I found, oh, I don't have time, then I wouldn't read at all. Well, that's really foolish. Mm-hmm. So I changed it to your point is like, just read every single day. Well, Oftentimes you're enthralled in a book like this morning. I was finishing Man's Search for Meaning. I read it every single year and I I must have read 60 pages because it was just, I couldn't turn it down. Couldn't put it down. You know, I literally couldn't put it down. It was so good. It's such a compelling book. So yeah, it's just, you know, give yourself some grace 
and just make sure you pick something up and read it every single day. Start there. And if you do 10 pages, great. Gold star. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. If you do one page, guess what? Great job. You read today. You read today. That's right. Uh, I'm going to switch gears on us. Uh, and we're just going to do a few fun ones just to, to get to know you a little bit. Uh, if you had to describe your leadership style using the title of a classic song, what would you choose and why? Oh, man, that one song. Freedom, I guess, is what I, that, that's what came to my head. I can see George Michael singing Freedom. <laughs> um, I would have said, it's not about you. That's my, that's my philosophy, but Freedom by George Michael came right to my head. That's funny. Yeah, fun. Um, you know, Once Upon a Time, Faith was my go-to karaoke song. So I'm a, I'm a George Michael fan, so we can, we can hang out on that one. Uh you we've heard a lot about your successes, but every leader has that one quirky habit or unusual talent that that isn't on their resume. What can you tell us? What what don't we know about you yet? Uh, well, I'm an avid sports guy, right? I had my shoulder replaced about a month ago, so I'm not doing a lot of it right now. But uh, I guess I loved I love watching my boys play sports and I love playing pickleball. I'm I'm obsessed with pickleball, by the way. So if you Who haven't picked it? it up at this yes. point. I mean, it's it's spreading like um, like dollar generals across the nation. <laughs> uh, okay, imagine you're hosting a dinner party. This is the last one now. In, in hosting a dinner party, you're going to invite three historical fiction or nonfiction characters. Who would you? Who's inviting to dinner? This is a classic cliche question, but it's so fun. I would say Nikola Tesla. Nelson Mandela and my dad. I know that's, but you know, I lost my dad about a year and a half ago, and to have another dinner with him would that would, would be, be amazing. It would be so. great. Well, um, gosh, we've talked about so much today, JM. Uh, it's just been a, a treat, and uh, I've been looking forward to this conversation uh, for a while. Um, we've talked about leadership, about limiting beliefs. Uh, you, what what can you tell us as a kind of a final? Uh, a call to action to our listeners today? You know, there's two thoughts that I have that I talk on often. The first one is to show up as your authentic self. And mm -hmm. I talk about that in the first book, but, you know, often I think of middle school and fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, we start to put these masks on to fit in. I want everyone listening that can hear this, give yourself permission to take the mask off and be your authentic, genuine self masks are not are, are meant for parties they are not meant for every single day so that'd be number one number two is consider upgrading people don't like change but what i've learned in my coaching is everyone loves to be upgraded so mm -hmm. just remember when you're thinking about your health or your mindset or you're thinking about your relationships there's nothing wrong with you but could you upgrade it could you upgrade it just a little bit that day and I think it takes off so much pressure to say judgment that there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. You're an amazing, beautiful person. However, can you upgrade? And that seems to really resonate with my clients that it's like, yeah, I, I like being upgraded. I like to get upgraded to first class on the sure. airplane. And, you know, so why not upgrade myself? So those would be the two lasting thoughts that i have eric and thank you for having me brother you're, you're an awesome host and yeah, i just thank appreciate you. you man uh i'm great i love that is, is i'm hearing a song in my head is that beyonce no there's a song about upgrade upgrade i don't know something like that I'm, it's gonna be in, it's to gonna be in my head the rest of the time now uh well here's what i'll say what a truly enlightening conversation uh we've had today with you jim or jam i always want to say jim jam um We've been kind of exploring parallels between like the corporate world and 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 ed leadership um, to just really understand how we can win every day. And it's not about winning. It's about how do we set ourselves up for winning. So I just really appreciate everything that you brought to the table. Um, again, I love the book. I'm going to be digging into the podcast, listening to it all. Uh, he's Jam is one of my new faves uh, out there right now. So um, I'm a big fan, and it's been uh, just a pleasure to to talk with you today. Um, to our listeners out there, if you're inspired by GM as as I am, don't miss the opportunity to delve deeper into his teachings, his experiences. Uh, if you're interested in booking GM or talk 
for a talk or, or workshop or something, please reach out to us and we'll get you connected. Um, and it's time that we all step up, redefine our paths and bring about those upgrades that we wanna see around us, right? Uh, in, in our educational communities. And with that, here's what I'm gonna say, as always, stay PKS, which is positive, kind, and supportive. Thanks everybody. We'll mm -hmm.